The once powerhouse multi-billion dollar brand of Gillette is back in the spotlight after $8 billion lost amid a toxic masculinity backlash. Stick around to see how this could affect you and how you would have been better off managing your own investments rather than going with the big players who get woke to go broke. G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back or to the channel where we are now deep diving again into the fascinating and huge multi-billion dollar business case where people have invested their good money and faith into a brand that has destroyed it with a write down of $8 billion in a quarter, a $5.2 billion net loss, which represents about a quarter of the value of the company within a very short time by adopting approach of attacking its very own customer base to marginalize, criticize and attack them with sexist, racist and derogatory advertisements that seek to put forward a political agenda. Now, again, this channel isn't so much about politics, but noting the majority of my subscribers are men, although I also have women in my channel, I would say that most of my subscribers, if not all of them, are good and reasonable people, irrespective of gender. And when a company decides to marginalize and attack a group of people based on their gender and color, we can see that, in fact, the truth is in the markets. And ultimately, the company, no matter what type of signal they try to portray initially, what type of belief they think they hold true, the truth in the markets will prevail and whatever the markets say will come to fruition. So before I read this article, think again about the banks who say Bitcoin is not real, Bitcoin is bad, Bitcoin will never work. Just as we've seen Buffett, Munger and Gates do the same thing, at least criticize Bitcoin, it doesn't matter what they say because the truth doesn't lie with them. The truth lies with the markets. Now, although the case study of Gillette raises may not seem on the surface to have anything to do with crypto, they in fact have a lot to do with crypto in the sense of the sentiment of the market and the truth that's in those markets and the reality that one or two people at the top who think they're doing the right thing to appease the cries of few are in fact not catering to the needs of the many. We have a situation where we had the voices of the loudest screaming to attack one group of people within society, straight white men, to elevate a political cause of creating a divide in society. On one hand, there is a scream for love, acceptance, inclusion, patience, forgiveness, and so forth. But in reality, we see the same people screaming for that, creating divide, marginalization, racism, sexism, and ultimately hate. The markets will not tolerate it and ultimately Gillette is now doing a 180, turning back on itself and changing everything that it's done in the last six months to try and claw back some of this $8 billion loss. Before I go on to read this article, whilst the company has previously said that the loss is due to people shaving less and a more competitive market such as the Dollar Shave Club. The reality is that $8 billion write down or 20% loss of the company does not represent what's actually happening in the razor or men's shaving space. And irrespective of what moves Gillette tries to make now, in crisis management, you typically have to act very quickly. Gillette faced crisis management pretty much the day it released its sexist campaign against men. And instead of going into crisis management mode, they in fact doubled down and put another ad out glorifying morbidly obese women in bikinis on the beach who were apparently happy with their bodies and happy using razors so they could wear a bikini at a beach whilst looking substantially overweight. Then to triple down on the marginalization of their primary customer, they then focused on a very tiny proportion of the population by focusing on a transgender woman who had become a man. So I think that's a transgender man who is learning how to shave for the first time after transitioning to a man. But of course, when it comes to commercial viability, it's great that we include people, but typically I don't see any advantage and the markets didn't see any advantage of precluding the majority of your customer through insults, marginalization, attacks, ridicule, and so forth, whilst glorifying a very tiny portion of your customer base. Again, this is nothing against transgender people. If you want to become a man or a woman, great, go for it. Moving on to the article, it reads, Just a few weeks after Procter & Gamble reported a sobering $8 billion write-down, Gillette has officially called off its war 
on toxic masculinity. The embattled brand has announced that it is now shifting the spotlight from social issues to local heroes. While the brand is admitting that it's reversing course on social issues messaging, Gillette is presenting its new focus as simply a return to what it's always done, except for the part where it attacks men. We will continue to represent men at their best, Gillette said in a statement reported by News Corp Australia. Instead of the social issues focus, that is the normalisation of marginalising straight white men, the brand will begin to highlight positive portrayals of heroic masculinity as seen in its new ad starring Ben Zeichenhenier, we'll just call him Ben Z, as an Australian firefighter and personal trainer. Gillette's toxic masculinity mess began in January when the brand released an ad accusing men of excusing bad behaviour and portraying traditional masculinity in an entirely negative stereotypical light. Boys will be boys. Isn't this the time we stopped excusing bad behaviour? Rethink and take action by joining us at bestamancangetorg the brand tweeted in mid-January. The ad features men engaged in all kinds of bad behaviour, including bullying, catcalling and groping women and violence, while a line of men behind grills declare the dismissive mantra, boys will be boys, in one obstinate voice. Translation, there was a whole heap of scenes where evil white patriarchy men were attacking poor, innocent, helpless women, and darker, good role model men would intervene to make sure that the evil white patriarchy wasn't damaging anyone, all under the banner of Gillette's righteousness. The ad presents the hashtag MeToo movement as the moment when the alleged toxic masculinity culture finally changed. There will be no going back because we believe in the best men can get the narrator states. To say the right thing, to act the right way, some already are, apparently only some are only doing the right thing, but everyone else isn't, in big ways and in small, but some is not enough because the boys watching today will become the men of tomorrow. And here we have a copy of that tweet where Gillette pushed it out at the beginning of the year saying, boys will be boys. Isn't it the time we stopped excusing bad behavior? Rethink and take action by joining us. Okay, so join Gillette, buy their product. So whenever you use it, you can look into the mirror and remind yourself that you're a piece of shit based on not your conduct, character or performance, but simply because of the color of your skin, your marginalized gender and the way the media wishes to portray you as a sexist, rapist, pedophile, violent pig. The backlash to this scolding and sexist ad was swift and strong, with many Gillette users taking to social media to announce they were done with the brand. For the next few months, Gillette responded by doubling down on the social justice messaging, releasing a fat acceptance ad, as well as an ad showing a father's first time teaching his female-to-male transgender child how to shave. But at the Daily Wire, where this article is coming from, The Wire reported seven months after rolling out its toxic campaign, Gillette's parent company Procter & Gamble found itself taking an $8 billion US write-down for the brand. Despite positive performance overall for Procter & Gamble, who enjoyed better-than-expected profits last quarter, the company ended up reporting a net loss of $5 billion. Let me just read that again. Despite positive performance overall for Procter & Gamble Co., who enjoyed better-than-expected profits last quarter, the company ended up reporting a net loss of $5 billion. That's better than expected? Interesting. The reason? Gillette's nosedive. P&G reported a net loss of about $5.24 billion, or... $2.12 a share for the quarter that ended in June 30, due to an $8 billion non-cash write-down of Gillette, the news agency explained. Gillette has given a number of explanations for its heavy losses, including currency fluctuations, bullshit, and more competition over the past three years, bullshit, and a shrinking market for blades and razors consumers in developed markets shave less frequently. Also crap, none of that represents a 20% breakdown in a company that's been around for 118 years and has enjoyed complete market domination for pretty much that entire time. The razor industry has declined by 11%, well there you go, 11%, not 20%, over the last five years, and that's another point to realise. They lost 20% in three months, and the entire industry has declined by 11% over five years. So those comparisons are in fact very distorted and very skewed to the fact that in one quarter, in one company, the biggest company, they lost 20%. 
But critics say Gillette is leaving out a key factor. This key factor being alienating a large percentage of its potential customer base. So here we have a company that is now doing a 180 on itself by releasing a new ad that paints men as good. So in the first instance, they've tried to attack all men by saying they're bad and that being mainly straight white men. And now they're turning it around by getting a straight white man who's a fireman to shave in front of a mirror whilst his little girl looks on with great admiration, looking at him like a hero as he prepares to defend the world, fighting fires bravely and doing what men now allegedly do best, according to Gillette being a protector and provider. In any case, when we talk about the marginalizations of groups, there is a huge focus on, of course, one particular gender being marginalized, which makes frontline news. But another group, when they are marginalized, it is treated as a way of apparently making big money, even though it is, in fact, marginalizing the very group who buys your product. Now, my crypto brothers and sisters, again, this is not a gender politics channel. We don't get too involved in the arguments between left, right, up, down and anywhere in the middle. We talk about money. And what we can certainly learn about this case study, which I think will be a case study put through university courses for years and years. I really enjoyed when I was doing my Bachelor of Management, my Bachelor of Economics, as well as my Masters of Business. I love the case studies. And I love the crisis management case studies. One in particular that I think of is when Sony was hacked and how they dealt with that. And this will be, in my opinion, a leading crisis management case study for future university students, as long as it doesn't offend the wrong group of people, shall we say. What we can learn from this, comparative to what we do on this channel, is the truth is in the markets, as I keep saying. That is, just because you have someone with a political agenda or a certain level of hate for a product or a person, so let's translate this over to Bitcoin now, just because you're a banker that hates Bitcoin, and even if you're a person who hates Bitcoin and is in a very financially and publicly powerful position, such as Gates, Buffett, Munger and Diamond, it doesn't matter. What matters is that the truth is in the markets. What we can also learn about this case study comparative to what we do in our crypto space is imagine you were investing your money into superannuation, which you probably do. And in last night's episode, I spoke about superannuation being split up into investments that you may not even be aware of. One of those investments might be tobacco. You may not like tobacco. You may have lost a loved one due to lung cancer caused by tobacco or any other health-related issue from smoking, whether it be actively or passively. Yet when you invest your money in centralized companies, other companies, they can use that money for evil by investing it into bad investments. Now, whether that be something like tobacco or a misandric and racist company such as Gillette, Ultimately, those decisions that are made on behalf of you with your money can and likely will have a flow-on effect to your holdings. Whoever authorized this ad within Gillette should be, in my opinion, according to business, if they're the chair of the board, immediately fire them. So a bit of background, it was in fact a female who designed and directed the ad, and some might say it's her fault. I would say she's arguably an extreme feminist doing what she does portraying men as evil predators who are toxic and need to be changed. That's their business. But it was the CEO of the Gillette board, the head of the board, the chair of the board who authorized the ad. And it was that man who not only authorized it, but funded it and then doubled down on it when they were in crisis management. So we're in a situation now where Gillette has pushed people out of the market. And even when they do a touchy-feely fireman men are heroes ad that you'll certainly see in coming weeks and months, the reality is, is that people have been pushed out and have bought new handles. So the business model for Gillette is you buy a handle. And in fact, what they normally do is at Christmas, they pretty much give away a razor have you noticed around christmas wherever you are in the west in fact pretty much in any country for about 10 bucks you can buy a box and in that box of gillette products you get shaving cream a razor a battery and a complete setup well that's actually a lost leader they purposely do that to get you into the market or your brothers or dads or friends in the market when you buy that as a gift because they lose or break even initially on that package but when it comes time to replacing those blades that's where they make the money that is the business model for Gillette. Give you a handle, get you into the market, and then you'll keep buying our blades. And hey, it's worked for over a century. But now that they've pushed people out of the market, and there's been so many instances 
of people throwing out their handles publicly. That is, they make a video. There was a big backlash. There was a Facebook page, a Twitter feed, a Reddit note, YouTube channels where the community was saying, we do not tolerate sexism and racism including against men. We don't tolerate it against anyone and we will not be marginalized. Therefore, we're throwing out this product. Well, now we're in a very interesting situation where this huge millions of men, hundreds of millions of men have spoken with their wallets and their actions and actually gone out and replaced these handles. And so what does that mean? That means now that when Gillette is finally recognizing that they're in crisis mode, crisis management mode, and they're trying to correct their abhorrent and deeply disrespectful and offensive and sexist and racist actions, it's too late. It's too late because so many people who otherwise wouldn't have entered into different areas of the shaving market have now done so. Many people have bought new handles and why this is different to, for example, when VW lied about their emission controls with the amount of pollution they were putting out with their diesels. If you remember that case study, we've kind of forgotten that and you see that a lot. And same with celebrities, sometimes they'll do something dodgy like when, uh, for example, Taylor Swift lied about what Kanye West said. We look at many instances where a celebrity or a brand has done something wrong and the truth is, is that most people forget. Most people get over it and you get a good advertising campaign and we move forward. And most people have forgotten that Taylor Swift openly lied about what was told to her about her allegedly friend Kanye West about using her name in a certain song. And most people have forgotten completely about the deception by VW where they lied about the emissions that were being put out of their vehicles. And some would argue on the surface that many people will forget about what Gillette has done to its customers. But here's the key difference, the handle. Now that people have gone out and bought another handle, because remember, the way that razors keep you in their brand is that all heads from razors don't just interchange with all different razor brand handles. They are unique to that brand. So now that people have different handles, whether it be Chic or Harry's or Dollar Shave Club, they've now got a handle and they've been exposed to a razor system, a new razor that is just as good as Gillette, but cheaper. And for them to now backpedal, they have to actually actively go out and buy a new handle or buy a new razor, all the while remembering exactly why they broke up with Gillette in the first place. So if you are an investor and you had invested in Procter & Gamble, namely its subsidiary branch of Gillette, you should be rightfully furious for the destruction of your shares. Even if you don't shave, even if you don't really care about the brand, don't worry, as an investor in money, they've destroyed your money. And they've actually destroyed your money through hate, marginalization, racism, and bigotry. And as a result, we can see that that type of behavior does not survive in the markets. Even if it claims to be virtue signaling, hate is hate, marginalization is marginalization, and bigotry is bigotry. And whether you want to do it against men, women, black, white, young, old, Asian, anything, it doesn't matter. Hate is hate. Bigotry is bigotry and the markets speak the truth. I am very fascinated from a business perspective to see how Gillette will recover from this, noting the realization that people have now gone out and got new handles. And when it comes to such blatant sexism and racism, I doubt many people will let go of this. Let me know your thoughts. Will you be going back to Gillette because they're now showing a fireman shaving in front of his daughter and the daughter looks up at him as a hero? Or will you not forget the grossly sexist actions of a company that has evidently been overcharging its product by up to 400% comparative to its competitors for years and years and years? What are you going to do on this? And if you had the chance to invest in mainstream stocks that you can't control due to decisions made by the board, or something like crypto, namely Bitcoin, that is purely determined by mathematics and the markets, not a board of directors, which one would you invest in? Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Bye bye Gillette. Say no to sexism, racism, bigotry and marginalization. And I'll talk to you next time. <laughs>